need to get away from here. The sacred city of Ilden is the perfect staging grounds for an apocalyptic attack by the nefarious spawn of chaos, an army of demonic creatures that happens to be swarming into the city through a giant tear in the sky, not unlike Dragon Age Inquisition's Fade Rift or Pokemon Legend Arceus's massive Space Time Rift. Here they are. Will you please finish what you started, if you can? None better to stop the invasion than the battle-hardened warrior Briar and her ghostly companion slash sister Loot, both of whom are Chimera members of the mysterious Order of the Ashen Blade and the supposed heroes of this world. Things don't exactly work out with the other Chimera, and you, playing as the dynamic duo, are left to vanquish the spawn of chaos by yourself, if not for the help of a few unlikely friends. This is the premise of Solstice, a frenetic, combat-focused, third-person action-adventure game with lots of unique combos that would feel right at home in any Devil May Cry game. You'll spend quite a large chunk of time in Solstice playing as Briar, who is followed around by loot in her ghostly form as you hack and slash your way through hordes of foes as you move from mission to mission in a linear fashion. Though, at times you may also find yourself playing as loot during key story sequences. The interplay between Briar and loot is definitely worth calling out as a clear positive, notably the fact that loot has the ability to pacify Solstice's many, many enemies mid-attack, so you can leap in as Briar to deal serious damage. It's great, then, that Solstice keeps a steady pace from the beginning, gradually ramping up the difficulty and showing you the ropes through tutorials which intermittently pop up to explain a new mechanic, of which there are surprisingly quite a few, even in the first few chapters. This level design is linear. However, it seems like there are just enough secrets hidden in the nooks and crannies of the Sacred City to keep explorers satisfied. Starting out, Briar only uses two of seven different weapons. The hefty, albeit swift, Ashen Vindicator Sword, which is great for light attacks, and the rather painful-looking Ashen Enforcer Warhammer that unleashes much heavier strikes. Granted, this ability system seems incredibly dynamic. As you progress, you gain access to a full set of diverse upgrades that include passive stat bonuses, as well as entirely new abilities like Ferocious Assault or Thundering Advance both of which happen to be activated by combos of basic quick and heavy attacks, and are all pretty bombastic in their own way. Granted, you'll need to carefully choose where to allot your points as you progress. It's also convenient that once you're finished with a mission, you can power up your abilities in the way mentioned previously, or purchase items like health kits and revives, in addition to more substantial stat boost items which cost a higher sum of points. If you don't want to wait that long, you might just run into the Observer, a mysterious NPC who shows up every so often to cheekily taunt you before explaining the background lore of a certain area and then offer you his wares. And if you don't like a certain ability, this is where you can respect your build. There's the sense that each of Briar and Loot's special abilities are easy to learn but difficult to master, in that they're all activated by some pretty simple button combinations. Take for example the Piercing Lunge move, a thrusting sword attack which you can pop off by gently tapping your left stick forward twice and then quickly hitting the Y button. I can imagine there's plenty of wiggle room to customize your playstyle at the higher levels once you memorize the combos for each of Briar and Loot's many abilities, including the very cool synergy abilities, which are some of the most powerful attacks you can unleash. But only after you sufficiently pull off enough smaller combos to power up something called the Unity Bar, which is basically a resource pool tied to Solstice's internal scoring system, which gauges how well you're doing. Regardless, the challenge ceiling is high enough in Solstice for it to be rewarding to get really good at your personalized moveset, so there's definitely something here for fans of games like Devil May Cry, God of War, or Bayonetta. That said, I'll be looking forward to Solstice when it drops on PC, PlayStation 5, and Xbox platforms on September 20th. For more info on Solstice, and for everything else in the world of video games, stick with IGN.